was here at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. I've never spoken in front of a crowd before except for my AA meetings. Welcome, Mark. Hi, my name is Mark. Here, Rob, this. <laughs> Spiritually known as the top. We're all here because we're, we're not all there. <laughs> I think you come here to speak tonight. Ryan fucked the shit out of me until I agreed to come up here. And I have these documents with me because I carry them with me wherever I go. I have like 10 sets of them. And this is what I use to navigate my way through our, uh, this society that we find ourselves in. Um, I understand that I can drive around with no license plate. Um, I also understand I'm going to spend a lot of time getting pulled over <laughs> and trying to explain stuff to cops who don't understand what's going on. So I drive with a license plate on my car and vehicles registered to a corporate fiction. Um, because I don't maintain a name. And if you're driving a car that's registered to a name and you don't maintain that, it, it doesn't work. You can't, you can't maintain the position that you're not the name if you're driving something that's registered to your name. So I keep my vehicle registered to a corporate fiction, and these are the only identity documents that I carry. And I've had occasion to produce them to cops who wanted to give me tickets and stuff. And, well, they had to let me go. So I'm just going to share that experience I, re I recently had this year with a York Regional who, well, when he pulled me over, he said, what's your hurry? And I just looked at him and he said, you just ran a red light. I said, did I? I didn't admit to anything. I just asked him a question, did I? And to that, he just said, okay, well, do you have a driver's license? I said, no, no, why would I want one of those? And you got this. <laughs> okay, I need license registration and insurance. And I just looked at him and I said, I'm ineligible for those benefits. And then he got a puzzled look and he said, Are there any documents in this car? Do you have any ID? And I said, Well, yeah. And I reached over and I handed him my statement of birth. Looked at it. Ready? He said, I need license, registration, insurance. I said, there is none. And I opened the glove box and said, look, there's nothing. There's, 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 there's no documents in this car. He said, is this car insured? I said, well, I presume so. <laughs> I told you it's not mine. He said, well, whose is it? Or to a corporation. He said, well, who's corporation? Who owns the corporation? That's what he asked me. He said, who owns the corporation? And I said, I don't understand the question. Do you want to know who the Class A and the Class B shareholders are? Do you want to know who's the director or who's the president? I mean, it's a corporation. And that's, that's when he gave up there. And uh, he took my statement of birth. He stomped off back to his vehicle. And, uh, after a little while, he came back and he walked around the back because he wanted to see if there was a sticker on my plate, I guess. And then he came back and he said, Today's your lucky day. <laughs> yeah. Well, it can't be bad. I can use a little luck. <laughs> he said, Today's your lucky day because running a red light, no insurance, no registration, and no driver's license, that's at least $700 in fines. I don't know where the hell he got that number, because to the best of my knowledge and belief, driving with no insurance is like a $5,000 fine, isn't it? <laughs> Something like that. But anyways, he had this number, $700, and he, he said, uh, he wagged his finger at me. He said, don't do that again. <laughs> So I said, may I have my document back? He said, oh, I gave you that. I said, no, you 
you, Dave? And he said, are you sure? I said, absolutely. So he went back to his vehicle. I mean, it's not like it's a driver's license thing because it's not on his dashboard. It's a big, like, yellow thing. How could he not know he had that? But I realized that he was probably trying to take, keep my gun because he understood that if I drove away with that, this was what was protecting me. And if I drove away without it, he could have easily. I was not young and 16. I was in the middle of Richmond Hill. There's cops everywhere. He could have, could have had me pulled over. But anyways, he uh, he went back to his vehicle and he retrieved this document off his seat. And as he came and handed it back to me, he said, this, write this paper. He said, don't do that again. So I took my document and I, I drove away without saying anything to him. My cousin who was in the bathroom. So this is a document I carry. It's a statement of birth. Uh, we've uploaded YouTube videos trying to share this information. You can get these from 777 Bay Street. Actually, you I'm, can't. No, they, they moved it up to 477. I was just Shepherd. about to say that. I was there two weeks ago on behalf of a friend. and. Uh, Ryan just informed me this morning when I was speaking to him that it's been moved up to 47 Shepherd. Yeah, 47, now, 47 Shepherd. Yeah, east, Shepherd, there's a east small place. Oh, that's the part. It's, it's uh, part. half a block uh, east of Young it's on the part. south side of Shepherd. Is where that courthouse is. I don't, I don't know why. We've been sending a lot of people down to 777 Bay Streets. And, uh, I guess they become annoyed with us, so they moved it up there. But I have the statement of birth, which I have notarized and authenticated. And here's the only other documents that I carry, and I seem to be able to navigate around quite well with these. Um, oh, this is cool. I like to get all my notarized documents authenticated, because when, that's an official document. Yeah. And it's more money, too. <laughs> yeah, but... There. This is uh, this is a page out of the police officer's manual. <laughs> I got it notarized, <laughs> and then I got it authenticated, so it's it's truth. And what we have here is on page 520 of the police officer's manual of criminal offenses and criminal law. We have the word person. And I'll dispense with all the here's here's the, the critical piece of information it says. The only person known to our law is the corporation. So if you're identifying yourself with government issued documents, a driver's license, you're identifying yourself as a corporation and you are known to their law. If you're identifying yourself as a living soul and you're not using the issued documents that Rob was talking about earlier, then you're not known to their law. They basically have corporate bylaws. We all know Canvas Corporation, the person's a corporation, and they've got all these corporate bylaws because corporations don't exist only on paper. They're not real. And so they can't observe these common law laws. They don't, they don't see them. And so they've introduced these corporate bylaws, and, and that's in essence what they are. So that's good when you can show a cop, look, this is your manual, and this is what it says about person. Here's another document I have. It's on the letterhead of the Registrar General, and the Registrar General are the people who maintain the birth records, and they issue your statement of birth. And this is a letter on their letterhead, and it simply says, to be clear, the Office of the Registrar General registers information about events. The Office of the Registrar General does not register people. And that's very significant. It's very significant when you understand what that means. And then, here's a good fake notice in case I don't feel like talking to a cop. I can just put this through my window and hand it to them. And it says, it's got the stamp of the Registrar General, it's got her signature on it, and it's notarized and it's authenticated, and it just says, with all due respect, officer, 
I do not maintain the name of any person in your jurisdiction. I am not entitled to any rights to any documents of identification you may seek by license. I provide you in good faith who maintains the birth name I am a recipient of and beneficiary protected by your higher powers. And his higher power is the Deputy Registrar General who's named on the birth certificate. And that's what I allude to when I, I say I provide you in good faith who maintains the name. Judith M. Hartman, the Deputy Registrar General, maintains the name. I'm not in charge of it. I don't have signing authority for it. And then lastly, it just says, below, I humbly and peacefully provide you proof so certified under the Vital Statistics Act uh, 46.1, who has signing authority for the birth name which protects me as a witness? And uh, that's what I like to carry. It's very effective and it works. And uh, if anyone wants to ask me a question, I'll be happy to answer. Um, so you basically do contracting with police officers? Is that in a form of commerce or no? I, I, no, I choose not to engage. So that, that showed the paperwork you give them? Well, this allows me, see, if a cop asks you for ID and you're not carrying any government-issued ID, well, you can put yourself in a position where you're failing to identify yourself. The cop can maintain that you're failing to identify yourself by not producing ID. I'm identifying myself. By giving that. There's a distinction, there's a very important distinction on the statement of birth that exists here and not on the birth certificate. It says surname and it says given name. And they're on two separate lines and there's a clear distinction made between given name and surname. Now if you look at the birth certificate, it says name. And it's got them both blended together as one. It's a trade name. It's a corporate, it's, it's, a, it's a trade name. And when you use that government issued ID, you're identifying yourself as the trade name. So if I'm asked to identify myself, and the fact so certified confirm what I'm about to say, I say, someone asked me my name, a judge, state your name for the record, a cop, what's your name? My given name is Mark. What's your last name? Only corporations have last names, human beings have titles. And I don't have a last name, and so I'd simply say, my given name is Mark. What's your last name? Well, that name was not given to me. I can only give that which is mine. My given name is Mark. That name was given to me. I can give that to you. The surname that you may see, it's shared by a group of people known to me as my family, but it's not mine. It wasn't given to me, and therefore I cannot give that which is not mine. And if you don't willingly consent to surrendering the surname, they can't establish jurisdiction. Period.